Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Does everybody have to clap when we have different? No, no so it's, it's just one. It's just once everything is on, like that's good enough. So I don't have to clap or anything. Not like, unless you want to. So I, I yeah. Unless I'm, you enjoyed I'm, the clap. Yeah, this is my. I'm clapping. Let's okay. do. Your, okay. Yeah, you get the clap. Yeah. We're good to go. <laughs> we're good to go. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Savage Saturdays. Um, we're on episode six. We have Stacy back with us. I was thinking, um, so today, um, my day started, I'm going to share a story with you guys before we get into today's topic, which is we're, um, we're going to try to stay focused and talk about goals, <laughs> setting goals, accomplishing goals. But Our first off, I have a story, focused. but I got a story about poop before we get into, <laughs> I want us to stay focused. But first off, like, man, my day started weird. Something weird happened. It's still, um, Do you have a weird poop? I, well, I, yeah, I had a weird start. To, so I, I actually I will, just went into his bathroom and that was a mistake. Did you not see the toilet? I did see the toilet. That's yeah, why so I that's, just <laughs> said that was yeah, a mistake. So my, yeah, my, yeah. So I, you know, I woke up at five o'clock this morning. I don't, I leave the house for the gym at 645, but I got up at five to have a cup of coffee, to have a poop. It's a 45, it's a 40 minute drive to the gym. Right. So I can't, I have to poop before I get to the, you know, yep. so I woke up at five, had a cup of coffee. I was pooping by like five 30. My goal was to be done by about six, six 15, have my smoothie. Then I get my bag packed. I'm out the door at six 45. So I was, I had my coffee and sub story. I found a new, a new good artist. All right, like, we need to stay on task. Yeah. Yeah. No, like we'll get there. We got plenty of time. We <laughs> got story who's running a timer for us here. I'll, I'll start a timer. Yeah. I got so, a timer. so I was, I was, uh, I was looking, I was, I was just, you know, sitting there drinking my coffee this morning. I was like, man, you know, sometimes I think of like if I had a DJ name or something or if I made music someday. So I, I was like, maybe I would call myself Neat Beats. Neat is Beats. This is a real story. This is yeah. a real story. So but yeah. this is this is important. I found this artist. That, so I looked it up on Spotify and apparently somebody already has somebody already took the band that. name Neat Beats and the the beats are neat. Are like they? it's good music. I sat there and listened to it. It's okay. fucking, it's, it's weird chill vibes. So anyways, I'm sitting past. there drinking my poop. coffee. I was drinking my coffee and then I threw a chew in and it was, it was time. Like every, you know, like it was time to poop the fucking <laughs> countdown got down to zero. I sat on the toilet and it was right there. And all of a sudden I was like, <laughs> I had to sneeze and I was like, no, oh, fuck, no. Lord. And I was trying to not, I was trying to hold the sneeze, but I couldn't hold the sneeze. Oh, dear. And it was just like, Achoo! like fucking. Like that sound it, effect I used in a it, video that fucking, one time. Yeah, there's still fucking poop splattered to the dam. No, it was like. I'm a witness. Grrr. Yeah, the, yeah, and I, I don't, I, I, have, I have pretty clean shits in it's the explosive. toilets. Yeah, so it was, that's how. I okay? literally, I went to go blow my nose and I was like, I should not have gone in here. It's not always like that. It's actually <laughs> never like that. I'm saying this morning was weird. It was the perfect fucking thing. I had a, what do you, what do you call that? Is there a word for when that happens? Like a, a sneeze poop? A, Cause I like Jack did his first startle know. fart the other day. Splatter sneeze. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. S -s yeah. Splash. And yeah, I don't know. Savage Saturdays. Yeah. Sneeze S -s 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 splatter. Sneeze and splatter. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's, that's how my day started. All right. And, yeah. Goals. 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 Goal is to you know, stay so on track. yeah. The, uh, so our goal is to stay on track, and I think yeah. So we'll, we'll see if we're able to accomplish it. But I think it was um, yeah, episode four. We talked for an hour about motivation and kind of like you know some some misunderstandings about motivation and things yep. like that. And actually, we we tried to record a podcast about goals one time, but we got a little bit confused and things. But I remember I um, one of one of the, like the biggest things I've learned over the years, or like it's, it's um, it goes like it goes against what everybody thinks they should do when it comes down to figuring out a goal and how to accomplish that. Cause what does everybody think? What does everybody say or tell people to do when it comes down to writing goal or doing goals, right? Write, write your, them down, write your goals down. Yeah. Everybody right. says, write your fucking goals down. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it was like two years ago, maybe, or something like that. I was listening to a Ted talk and I still cannot find this fucking Ted talk, but I found other ones that are like it. And it's like the science of, of goals. It's like, and so there's a lot of like psychology studies out there and things like that that says one of the worst things you can do if you're trying to accomplish a goal is to write it down. And even worse than that, it's tell somebody mm -hmm. if, if, so if you want to fail, tell somebody your goal. And it makes me think of the old adage, you know, um, 
people have been saying for hundreds of years, like the best way to make the gods laugh at you is to tell them your plans. They fucking knew this back then, but we still sort of struggle with it. And now today it's like, I, I thought forever to write down your goals and people have vision That's boards what they taught us and like things like that. Forever ago, I, like yeah. write it down. Or we would have like workshops, like, all right, this is on goals, write down your goals. And so it's normally like, you know, short term, long term. And then they always used the acronym SMART. It was, I don't even know what SMART stands for. Something. I remember hearing that, but I don't. I don't know. Something <clears throat> realistic and timely. Mm. I, it's SMART. Measurable. Smart is measurable. measurable. Yeah, yeah. It was in there. S, I don't know, something. <laughs> but that's, yeah, so right, that obviously didn't work. Yeah. So <laughs> so it was funny. So at the, at the point that I, I, I was watching this this TED Talk and it was like, don't write down your goals. I already wasn't writing down my goals anymore and I was accomplishing things. So this like, this was- More than you were before? Oh, yeah. And so and so I, I saw this and I was, and it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I've sort of just learned something naturally over time. Um, and then science comes later and backs me up. But apparently like people have been talking about this in psychology Did since like the early 1900s. Did you not write them down because you don't like doing paperwork anyway? No, or? it was, no, it wasn't, no. So it wasn't working. I swear to, I, I okay. No. So no. I, you know, like I tell people like I'm big, I, you know, when people are like, do you count macros? I'm like, no, because I used to all the fucking, I used to. So I, I would say from the time I was like started fitness when I was 17 till um, probably about after I got a little, a couple years after I got shot for probably like eight years, I wrote every motherfucking thing down and especially in the army. So the reason they say, don't write your goals down is because, and, and the reason they say, don't write your goals down, don't tell anybody because our brains don't know the difference between actually accomplishing that goal and telling, you know, like when we write it down or we tell somebody, our brains think we've already accomplished that goal. It's a really, it's a really crazy thing. And it made sense to me because here's what I used to do. Like I would, I would, I would get a notebook like every Sunday for like, I was a, you know, and, and I would, I would on page one, I would write down my goals and they were, I was chasing perfection back then. You know, like every Sunday I was like, I'm going to quit chewing tobacco. I'm going to fucking do every fucking thing right. I'm going to eat only good food. I'm going to do this workout. I'm going to accomplish this goal. So I, I wrote down these goals and they were sort of they were, they were strict. I was chasing perfection, you know? And like Monday I would, I think I would do good. And I would, I would write down all my food. I would write down my workouts and things like that. And then like, like, it it was either Tuesday or Wednesday. I would fuck it up. Yeah. I would, you know, (laughs) like new year's resolution. Yeah. And I I would fuck even the minor (laughs) January people are done. And then the most minor transgression and I would throw the notebook away. Like, fuck it. I'm and I would done. wait till Sunday and get a new notebook because that other notebook was fucking tainted with failure. And because Sunday is when Sunday, yeah, this tainted is how, with hey. Fa- that sounds like a band. Way, he bu- <laughs> tainted, tainted with, with failure. failure. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Sean Ensley <laughs> makes fun of me for that about me. He's like, impure. He always says, <laughs> impure. Derek also buys like the moleskin notebooks oh, yeah. that are like $20, $30. Yep. And a stack of them. I was going to say, there's probably a stack in his bookshelf right there that have mm-hmm. never been touched. Like he is the king of notebooks and they're expensive. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I, I mean, this is years of my life and then I would wait. So I would throw a notebook away because I fucked up and then I would live like, or, you know, then, then I would basically sort of give up on any goals at all Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because I knew, you know, for me, it was like you plan on Sunday and you start on Monday. And so, and that was the cycle of my life for fucking years. And I was never really accomplishing anything because I was only working two to three days out of the week, you know? But so when they say, don't write down your goals, uh, don't tell people Sundays, I felt great. When I fucking wrote down my goals, I I felt great after I felt, I remember feeling, I, I would feel relieved, you know, I'd be like, okay, this is, this uh, is it, it was, doing. it was cathartic. It was cathartic. You know, it's like, okay, like I'm on the right path, but right. writing them down, make writing you... them down made me feel better. Yeah. And it, and, but you know, um, and so it, it makes, you know, the psychology of it is, is like, it makes you work less hard towards that goal because you fucking, in a way you already, you already feel good about it and you shouldn't feel good until you yeah. accomplish the goal. Like right. there's a lot of work that goes into it. So you know, and now I live my life. I don't, I don't write down my goals. I just say, okay, Hey, I want to do this. And then I work towards it. So like I'm doing things right now or I'm doing things the right way now, but I just sort of figured it out. 
and I look back on what I used to do and I, right. and I hear that, you know, I hear this, the, the psychologists and things like that now. And they're like, don't write down your goals. Don't tell people. I'm like, that makes a lot of fucking sense. I was going to ask you in the beginning, like, so why are we talking about this? What are your goals? Like, what, but if you don't, you're not supposed to tell people. Sure. I know. So it's like, yeah, but you know, so, um, so actually, uh, yeah, but my, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little bit nonchalant about my goals and things like that. No, you know, and I, I, I don't really have. Meaning what? Like you, cause that to me sounds like you're not dedicated no, I'm, when you say nonchalant, like. I get like, yeah. So I'm, I'm certainly dedicated. It's just like, I'm not in a hurry anymore. I'm not stressed out. So like the or, T, the timeliness is not necessarily like a, a big factor for you, but I'm, I'm sure it depends on like what goal it so, is. So, so right now, if you know, so right now it's like, I have a powerlifting meet April 4th. It's in exactly. three weeks. We, we started prep. A time stamp. On yeah, yeah. So for sure. It, yeah. And, and, and so if, if we're like, so I get, I guess we'll try to make points throughout this, the time, like when, when we say, when we, we encourage people to have goals and that's remember when we did, I used to run a, a, a nonprofit for veterans and it was called the next objective. And that's what it was. It was like, pick a, pick a goal in like four to six months. And we used fitness and it was like, sign up for a competition, yeah. participate in a race, yeah. something fucking tangible yes. in like four to six months, something you can work towards, yep. you know, cause that's, that's what, that's what, you know, people get stuck in a lull for years because mm -hmm. they don't have any kind of tangible goal. And I, th I really think a goal in, in that four to six month window is the perfect time. Six months is a little long. Yeah, that's a you long know? time. So yeah. like this 10 week powerlifting prep, that's it's fucking perfect, you know? Yeah. Cause like it sucks, sucks, sucks. But then, yeah. you know, and, and it's and over. It's work. Yeah. And, and you get to move on to the next yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember like in the air force, our PT tests, I get it. They're not so, <laughs> so hard. I'm sitting with two army infantry guys, but, uh, so it was like, people would just like speed, you know, train maybe a month out before their test. Cause we know when our tests are going to be, and it's not oh, that these, difficult. These... And so you would just like run really quickly. And I, I did that also mm -hmm. in the very beginning, I would just run really quickly you know, like a, a month out from my PT test and I would train a month out and the rest of the whole entire year, I wouldn't do yeah. anything in the when beginning until I started doing CrossFit. But that gives you a, t a time, a goal. I think that's a good first, that's a good start. You know, like, what did you say? Four, four ish months four out. Four to six months. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like you said, like do a Tough Mudder, do something like yeah. that gives you a good timeline. Cause otherwise if you're not good at holding yourself to a time, then why would you do that now? And, and so, I, you know, people write me all the time, like military people they are like, Hey man, what's the best way I can lose weight and get in shape. I have a PT test in two weeks oh, and I'm just yeah. like, fuck you. Like, two like in, in, inside, <laughs> not, you know, not gonna I, happen, but. I, you know, I, I tell them the real answer. I'm like, Hey, you need to fucking train all like you're in the military. You need to be yeah. in shape all year. Like yeah. Stacy says she would prep for her PT test, yes. but she was always in shape. And right. when she did her PT test, she'd score like 98 out of a hundred or a hundred out of a hundred on most stuff. Stacy's one of those people that doesn't like to run. I we, hate we, running. we sort of judge her negatively for that around I here, but like, running. it's okay. You know, but, um, I, I will that. say this. I did not train all the time but my PT test did make me train harder because I knew that time was coming up and I did have a goal to always be like over 90% because if yeah. we did over 90, we only had to take our test once a year. So these were like things I knew I had to hit. PT tests to me were never a secret ever. You know the score you have to get. It's literally, you have the answers to the test. That's what we always told people. You have the answers. So do it. That's all it takes. It's a, it's a, it's a funny, like a, like having a goal, like a, a, a tangible, like I'm saying a tangible goal. A lot of people, a lot of like, we're talking, when we talk fitness, a lot of people are like, I want to lose X amount of pounds in X amount of time. Well, that's to me, that's just kind of like a stupid, boring goal and it, or it's not, it's not fun. Like if you train for a race or like, you know, you can do a run or a triathlon, a powerlifting meet, a CrossFit competition, a bodybuilding show, something where it's like performance-based, 
something performance based, you know, right. if you're, if you're exercising and eating better so you can perform well, you're going to look better. You're going to lose weight. And As a consequence like of doing yeah. the work, like mm-hmm. it's just going to happen. But, but you, but, and, and, um, putting a, you know, like having a race date or, a, or like a PTS date, we mm-hmm. have to fucking human proof our lives. Cause we're fucking dumb. And so yeah. everybody procrastinates. Procrastination is a human thing. And the only way to avoid procrastination is a fucking deadline. You know, like think yep. about when you're in school and, and things like that, you know, like we know our fucking papers do, yeah. but everybody procrastinates. Procrastination is a fucking, it's, it's, it's normal, you know? And the only way to avoid that is a deadline. So a race date or a competition date or something like that, that, that human proofs the procrastination part of it. So, so like, yeah, I like these, uh, you know, these, these four to six month goals. And that's sort of what propels me for the most part. And it's like, I do one thing and then I do the next thing and then I do the next thing. And if I don't do something, I find myself getting caught up in my head and, and depressed too much. You know, like last year was interesting and I made it out. I didn't compete, but last year I just kind of, you know, I, I worked out and um, my only goal was to lose weight and look better and feel better. And that was, it was like, like I say, I've said it a couple of times, like that's pretty, it's not, it's easy. It's not asking too much from people to, you know, simply uh, just exercise and live well and things like that. But right. yeah, so like having, Ha, um, having a timeline and, and I'm very, I'm very performance based goal driven. I couldn't just, you know, fitness. I was even saying this a long time ago. There's a difference between fitness and purpose driven fitness, you right. know? And so that's a, that's a mistake. A lot of people make when they're, they're like, my goal is to lose 25 pounds because I'm going to fucking Jamaica next month. It's like, Oh man, I want to no, look like better in my, we're, we're talking purpose, about a motherfucking like, lifestyle. Like I think we said it in, in episode one, it's like fitness is my life yep. and I don't expect it to be other people's lives, right. but health and fitness <laughs> should be a part of everybody's daily motherfucking life. So you're saying like just trying to look good for spring break is not a purpose enough. You think like psychologically or like what? Yeah. Cause or, you know, like it seems like, I think for some people it works for sure. Like I don't want to look like a sack of potatoes. But those are the, the people beach. who fucking crash diet, turn to keto and then fucking spring break <laughs> happens. And then what happens after spring break? They just get fatter than they were before. These well, are the, these are the people that are out I'm, there fucking drinking juice for fucking three days and shit like that. Honestly, the crash dieters, the panickers. Maybe it's not their goal to be fit after spring break. I don't know. Maybe like that's the case. Well, you think they're like, I just, I just want to look good for spring break. And then I want to be a fucking disgusting, nasty piece of shit. Well, That's I my mean, goal. Then I want to I just, more talking. Yeah, I just want to, I yeah. just want to go back to hating myself. <laughs> you know? Not, <laughs> no, I, I think I've definitely thought that like, okay, I'm going on a trip. I want to look good for this trip. And then after that, I don't have to be as disciplined. Like sure. I don't want to look like a sack of potatoes still, sure. but yeah. But I mean, like we're, but we're, we're pretty good at this stuff. And a, a lot of people sort of don't put any effort into it. It makes me think about, you know, like the people that want to look good for spring break. It makes me think about like cosmetology students. I see like when, when I, where I lived in Minnesota, there was like an Ulta university. So I saw all these cosmetology students and they were like, a Veda. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Veda. I think that's what it's called. It's so they, oh, they all wear black. They all they have to wear, they black. all go fucking tanning. <laughs> they have fake eyelashes, fake nails. They wear a ton of makeup. They do their hair. They put a lot of like, these girls put a lot of fucking work into their appearance. It sounds great, but because they're fat. But it's easy to oh. do that because you can buy those products yeah, right it's now. It's funny where that's so, the thing that's happening right now. But that across proves the world. that people care about how their their appearance, their appearance how they're perceived, when they're yes. do, they're willing to do everything fucking humanly possible except the work. Yeah, except the work. It works hard. Know? Yeah, it and so is hard. It, and it yep. takes a long time, and you can't shortcut the time. Yes. Yeah, you can't shortcut that's it. That's what it is at all. Time. Time, 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 time. So, so, you know, it's like, um, and I think, I think, um, getting back to it, I think getting goals, having a goal, having a couple goals a year, it makes it easier to work out all year, to eat better all year, to give a shit all year. Like it's super easy just to fucking, you know, I don't, you know, like so your first I, recommendation would be 
a four to six month goal. Yeah. Pick something like for, so for me, so, and, and, and to do like, I'm not just a shallow dude. Who's like, you better look good or something. Like, we, we, like, what do we mind, body, soul, mind, body, soul. The body is part of it. You know, like a healthy body is, is, a, is a healthier mind and you know, like things like that. So, um, yeah. So for me, you know, um, when I, after I got shot or after, you know, after I got retired from the army from 2000, from like what, June, 2009 until December, 2010, that was like the worst period of my life. I didn't, I didn't have any goals and I was living like shit. And I was, you know, that's when I kind of like, I was really fucking fighting with suicide back then. I was, I was, I was taking care of my mental health, but I was a fucking wreck. I didn't have any goals, man. And so what, what really fucking started turning my shit around. And this is why we started the next objective is I, um, my buddy, Sean Ensley, or my friend, Sean Ensley in Colorado, he, he put on Facebook that he was putting a team together to do the Tough Mudder. And back then, Tough Mudders were a brand new thing. Yeah, those you know? new. Yeah, so this was December 2011, and I saw it on Facebook. And I don't know why, but I reached, I reached out to him. And, and we were in the army together and he was, he was like an E4 when I was an E1. So I knew of him, right. but I didn't, you know, and that was, was like, that was, that was the fucking E4 mafia days, you know, yep. where like I was a piece of fucking shit to him. And, and he was, was going to let you was, know. And dude, when he was in the army, he was like six, four, 220 pounds of fucking steel. And I went and worked out with him and this other Sean one day. And I was like, bro, how do you fucking like look like that. That's fucking amazing. You know? But anyways, he was, he was, he had gotten, <laughs> med- he got medically retired as well. And sort of just sort of didn't, he didn't have any goals and he, yeah. you know, got out of shape and, and hard, wasn't, wasn't happy with himself. So a hard he, transition. So he was, yeah. So he was doing this tough mutter as a reason to fucking try again, you mm-hmm. know? And I read his, his post about it and he's really good with words. And I was like, dude, I, I, I need, I think I need this, <laughs> you know? And I was like, can I be on the team? And at this point I had been just annoying my friends. And he lives in with, Colorado. Were you in Colorado or? No, I was in Minnesota still. So you yeah. still were like, I want to be on this team. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he, he would, he would reach out to me a little bit and things like that back then, like check in on me and stuff. But dude, I was like, you know, I was so miserable back then. Like I, I hated myself so much that I fucking thought I hated everybody and I was just mean, so you, you know, thought you were just like a lost cause. Yeah. Like just mm-hmm. why is anyone wasting time on me? Yeah, yeah. Things like that. And so I, I asked John, I was like, can I be on your team? He's like, dude, we'd fucking love to have you. Mm-hmm. And that's, and that, and that just sparked something in me again, yeah. you know, like all of a sudden something to work, something for. so stupid. Like there was nothing fucking special about a tough mutter. You finish a tough butter mutter. Guess what? Nobody gives a fucking shit. But for uh, me, I'm proud that I finished one, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I mean, it, but like, so, but like achievements, accomplishments, they're fleeting moments, yeah, you know, and, and there's yeah. no fucking, you know, so we do, we, but so we have to learn to do these things for ourselves yeah. and know why. But so this tough mutter, it just, it, it's, all of a sudden I had a goal. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden I had something, something I, I had for, and I had to yeah. train for it. Yeah. And my, you know, I had my human leg back then and it didn't bend. So it's like, I didn't know if I could run oh, and shit. my leg hurt super bad. Yeah. So I was coming up with creative ways to improve my cardiovascular endurance without having to run. Cause like the Tough Mudder I signed up for was in the mountains. It was in the Rocky mountains, you know, it was like at Elevation. altitude. <laughs> It's yeah, yeah, yeah. mile high. Hell of a mile yeah. yeah, so this was Beaver Creek. I think it, I think we started it we went from like nine to eleven thousand feet, somewhere in that range. So that'll break you off. Yeah. yeah. But but so and the so the event was in June. So I had six months to train for this. Like this it it just worked, man. It fucking worked. All of it. Like I started I like I started working out twice a day. I started going to school again. Like so, so it's, it's weird how when you give a shit. I swear to fuck, when you give a shit about your health and fitness, other things just seem to fall in place. Yeah. You know? But you have to be consistent. Like in the beginning, you have to be consistent. Just go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Just walk or something. Well, and so, and that gets to the point that I was, I I just made me think where you said, you know, you had this goal six months out, but then you started going to the gym. You started doing two a days. That's like a little sub- subset mini goal that helps get you to the bigger one. That's part of the, another, no, like, so that's the plan. Step one is the goal. Like what's, what's the goal, right? What's the goal? Step two is the plan. It's like, okay, how do I accomplish this goal? What do I have to do? Like realistically, what do I have to do? And it's not like drastic fuck, you know, the mistake I made early on, 
when I was, you know, writing goals down, it's like, I'm going to quit chewing tomorrow. That's not fucking realistic. That is like super fucking difficult and weird. It's like small fucking Especially changes. when you chew like 12 if, cans of dip yeah, a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's like <laughs> realistic. Like you have to pick a realistic goal. Right. And like you the said R that. And and, smart. Yeah. And so, and then you have to make a plan and it has to, it can't just be like, <laughs> do not do a fucking 180 life change overnight. You know, think about changing your life over the next two years, you know? And so it's like, start a small goal, like a good thing, a fucking 5k. That's a A great one. If you got, if you got, if you like running, if you got like 50 or a hundred pounds to lose, sign up for a 5k. There are 5k's everywhere. Every motherfucking where, you know, like like, every weekend, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it amazes me how many people have not done 5k's before. Cause it would just, I guess in my world, I thought it was common, but it's not at all. And you can just walk the 5k. Like, how about that be your first goal? Yeah. Walk the 5k. Sign up for like yeah. publicly, Sign up, yeah. publicly do fitness. That's show up the, at that's the, the first time yeah. where you're supposed publicly to be. Show up. Yeah. Yeah. Have people see you be I mean, there. Hard, though. <laughs> Fucking yeah. finish it. It's just a reason. So like, like I said, there is, there's really like in it, you know, in, in the big, in the grand scheme of things, there's nothing special about doing a Tough Mudder, but that's literally what turned my life around at it was the time. a springboard. It, it was it for was your the next catalyst. goal. Yeah. It was the catalyst, you know. And so it's it's funny. And then so like I, I I trained for it, and I was just more positive. I was being friendlier. I was talking to people again. I wasn't shitting on my friends and family. You know, it fucking, became nice to be around. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm still me. It's still it's still a little painful for those but around me. That but. brings up something too. Like with fitness, people are so afraid to ask for help with like form or what should I do? How do I do this correctly? People are so afraid. How do I do this? I don't know how to do that. That's and a then, good and point. so I'm not going to do it because I'd I rather not do it, do it than do I've it wrong. I've always said, yes. you know, I, I don't know if it's a, uh, I think, I don't think, I think people, they're not afraid to ask how to do it. They're overwhelmed by the amount of information that's out there and to the point where it's fucking paralyzing. And that's sort of like, you know, I've been helping people. I've been trying to give people information about health and fitness for like six years. And now, yeah. you know, like we sell training programs and things like that. And, and for a while we were help, we were doing the cooking videos. The cooking videos were entertainment, but it was really because I have this training group and these motherfuckers didn't know how to cook. That also so, started out as a like, Hey, let's talk about healthy food. And yeah. since you eat so clean, that yeah. was our version yeah. of doing like a help mm-hmm. you help yeah. you learn how to cook clean. So it's not, you know, so like I, I, <laughs> but I, that brings up the, the next point is today it's easier to do those things and ask those questions without. Uh, so I guess it's a, a way to save face with the way the internet is now is because you don't have to necessarily walk up to you, find Derek Wida and say like, I don't know how to do a deadlift. Can you help me do a deadlift? Now I can go on YouTube, look yeah. it up mm-hmm. or just, DM you and say like, Hey Derek, I know you're good at this. How do I do this? So it's way easier with the internet now to do that also. YouTube. But it is scary. It's really scary. Like, I don't know how to do this, so I'm not going to do it. So like even, even people I'm friends with personally give really shitty fucking fitness advice on the internet. They do. There's just like, there's there's an overwhelming, yeah. yeah, there's an overwhelming amount of information. So like, so like when, when, when I talk about like when we're, when we're on this podcast, uh, the I, I pretend I'm talking to the listener who's just like really fucking lost. They got a hundred pounds to lose. And I'm thinking about this person, like what they're going through. Like they need, you know, like we're, our guys that are in the military that are listening to the show and they got their shit together. They're just here for a good time or something yep. like that. Or maybe like to hear something they know in different words, which is nice. But it's like, if, if, if our goal in this podcast is to help somebody, we have to think about the person who knows none yep. of this shit. So that hundred pound person, they're just like, you know, they go on one website. Okay. Like, okay, what should I eat? Okay. I'm reading this. Okay. Like, okay. I need to eat three eggs. Like eggs are good for me. I should eat more eggs. And then they go to another website eggs and it's like, bad. eggs will fucking kill you. And they're yeah. like, I don't know what to Only fucking eat do. The whites I, don't, of eggs. I don't know what to so fucking do. That's so the other thing too, is that <laughs> it's, it's a double-edged sword, the internet right now. So it's great because I can save face and I don't have to ask you to your face because I'm embarrassed. How do I do this? But there's so much information that's incorrect also, or different depending on what my goals are. Yeah. So it's very difficult. It so, is very difficult. so I guess like, okay, that's a good, so I've been doing this, um, 17 years. I did a lot of dumb shit for 10 years, but I think I did all the, I did all the stupid 
the, the, you know, the, the dumb diets, the stupid exercises, you know, I was like fucking un- mentally unstable with my goals and accomplishments and things like that. I was a fucking mess, but like, that was like, when we say fitness is often like trial and experiment, trial mm-hmm. and experiment. Well, I was, I've, I figured it out after a while and now I'm, f- you know, I'm free of that stuff. And what we do is we try to help people avoid some of those mistakes and things like that. But like when you, like, it's okay to do some dumb shit for a while, as long as you recognize it's fucking dumb. It's kind of part of the fucking learning curve for health and fitness. You know, it's like, oh man, that was stupid. That didn't really get me anywhere. Yeah. That CLA I took for six months didn't do fucking jack shit, but like, but it's, yeah, yeah. Like linolic, like something linolic acid. People use it for like losing weight or something. Probably, oh, oh. probably something Dr. Oz fucking still pitched. I took CLA back in the day. It was I like, never even heard of it. Like, do you want to be fucking ripped like in Jack? GMC Take CLA. Or something, yeah. Or like, and I think uh, it's actually like a good fucking compound, but it's not like a miracle pill. Like I used to think it was and stuff like that. So I, I, I okay. So like to, speaking to that person, like if you are overwhelmed with information, like just fucking, you know, just it fit. It's easy. Pick a goal. Pick a goal, make a plan, make it, make, make your goal fucking make your goal attainable. You know, like you go, okay, you got a 5k, just start fucking exercising and eating better. And then, you know, like if you can run the whole thing, cool. If you, if you can't cool, you just walk a little bit. It's all about like your first goal, your first fucking goal is just the practice. And so is your second goal and your third goal and your fourth goal. And then you get addicted and you're like, okay, I don't just want to do these like stupid fucking goals. I'm I wanna, crushing these I wanna, goals. I want to go some harder. I want to go win some shit. Yeah. I want to go win something. And then you get addicted to winning and things like that. You yeah. don't have to take it that far. Yeah. But, but the consistency but, there that you said in the beginning is key because I read somewhere, you know, cause somewhere on the internet, everything on the internet's real. So, uh, it was saying how habits are formed and that's because you're consistent in something. So if you are a person who brushes their teeth every morning and every night, which you should be, that's just something out of habit that you're doing, but it becomes a habit because you are doing it so often at those specific times. So making something a habit becomes a consistent thing and you can use that in your goal, but it it is difficult at first, but if you just get up and do it, that could be your first goal. My goal is to get up and do it one time a day, however many times a week, whatever that is. This, and you know, like things are so easy for me. Not like that. Like when, when I set out to, uh, when I pick a goal, I'm like, I said, I'm nonchalant about it, but I'm not nonchalant about it. I'm just not stressed out about it because yeah. I fucking do everything right. But it's because I've been beating that into my brain for fucking 17 years. And I yeah. wasn't good at it for 13 years or so. Like it was hard, but all of a sudden one day, like it just, things just fucking sort of clicked. And now it's like, it's like, it's fucking liberating. You, you go know? tunnel like, vision on your goals too. Yeah. But it's, but He's, it's, but Derek's it's, it's just an extreme. It person. just comes, right. it's, like, it, but it's just, it's just natural for me now. What like, but it hasn't always been this way, you know, like it used to be like very up but and it was down something and that you did consistently. Yeah, so that it's just habit. habit. It became habit. Now. So yeah. like, yeah, it became habit. Yeah, you so just like created that. That's another practice. thing. But it was hard fucking thought. Fuck yeah, so like, you just don't give up. Like, like don't give up. When you're fucking, if you're trying to make healthy living, one of like, if that's, if, if your goal is to just be healthier and more fit, like you have to beat that into your fucking brain for years and years and years. And then it bit like, so like, I don't crave, I used to crave snacks all the time. Like everybody else, I don't crave snacks anymore snacks. because I've just, I love I've, snacks I've, too. I've, I've beat that like out of my, Stacey snacks because she picks out good ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I get yeah. you good snacks. I know good snacks. You do. Well, just, you get her. Just, yeah. You just got the same taste. All the time. That's right. Well, <sighs> You know, she asked, you know, she, you know, she said, well, she's, you know, she's like, I need chocolate. I was like, I'll go to the store and get you some chocolate. What do you want? She's like, I don't care. So then you can't come home, home with like, the wrong fucking thing. He comes thing. home with like eight you, different yeah. chocolates. And uh, I'm like, and, what but, am I supposed to do? Eat all of them. No, that's, you can, so I, was, I, like, I was like, do. Hey, you can throw fucking, I bring home four candy bars. You can throw three away. I don't give a shit. I just no, don't want to come home with the wrong one. Away. I'd rather weigh $6 than come home with the wrong one. Yep. You know? Oh, you don't want it? Okay. That's fine. Oh, and I'll probably eat it. Yeah. <laughs> Consistency yeah. is key. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but do you want to talk about this super cool, awesome podcast and the acronym they use for goals? Yeah. What is it? What was it? I listened to it in the Whoop. pod. Whoop. That's right. So actually, so this was, um, you know, another, so when I, when I, you know, at the beginning of the show here, I, I talked about the, the Ted talk I watched, the yep. Ted talk I right. watched and it, and it, 
and I looked back on my life and I was like, wow, I figured that out on my own. Just not because I'm fucking special or something. It's just sort of like the natural course of my life. I was like, and it makes a lot of sense. And then it kind of like, I was like, okay, I, it makes sense. Well, Stacy um, showed me this podcast. It's called the happiness lab. Yes. And it's hosted by a Yale doctor, I believe, or professor. So it's Dr. Lori Santos. Yeah. And she has quite a few different episodes, but the my favorite, favorite one is... Well, she, well, she's, it's funny. So she was telling me about this podcast and she was, it was like a five minute speech and in my head and, 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 and it was good. Yes. And, and <laughs> yeah, Stacey. Stacey was telling me, she was telling me all these things. Like, did you know this? Did you know this? Did you know this? And in my head, I was like, yes, I, yes. Do, I do all yes. these things. Actually. So I, yeah. So, so my I, favorite episode is number seven, which just so happens to be my favorite number. It's called don't accentuate the positive. So there's a lot that goes on throughout the podcast. She interviews quite a few different people. But the acronym that they bring up, which is um, another doctor brings it up and she's in coordination with her husband. They came up with WOOP, W-O-O-P. So the first is wish. The, the first O is outcome. And then the second O is obstacle. And then the P stands for plan. Do you remember what all of those stand for? Or you want me to talk about them? No, no. Yeah, go ahead. Go for it. Okay. The so wish the wish is, the, the wish, wish sounds is like the like, the goal. Yeah. yeah. What's your goal? So yeah. like literally what do you want yeah. to accomplish? And so this can go back, like that's your motivation. Yeah. When yes. we say like, when, you 100%. Know, when we said motivation is nothing more than an idea of who you want to be or what you want to do, that's your wish. That's your, yep. it's your dream. That's your motivation. Yeah. So what is your goal? Okay. You want to do a Tough mutter. That was your first goal. So the O, the first O is outcome. So what is your life really going to be like after you accomplish that goal? Uh, this is, I want to, I want to unpack this one a little bit. Cause oh, like this, one, this, this one, this one is the super cool part. The, like that, like what, so you pick a goal. Okay, cool. What does it take to accomplish that goal? Sometimes so that might be different than the, O. Oh, the second O is obstacle. Oh, well, the, the outcome, you said, like, how is it going to impact your life or something like that? Yes. So I was saying, like, sometimes- What is your life going to be like after you accomplish that goal? What is, oh. your, what is your life oh, yeah. really going to We're be like? We're not there yet. Oh. Yeah. So it's like, I want to be president. Okay, that's your wish. What's the outcome? What is your life really going to be like once you're president? Like, is that really, it, it kind of like, it, to me, it's Oh, shit, I'm of, the fucking president, you know? Yeah, right. You All have, of a sudden, oh, fuck, really? this is a like, stressful job. A lot of people yes. liked me yesterday. Today, everybody fucking hates my guts, yes, and I'm to blame exactly. for everything. Yeah, okay. That's how pick I this interpret that, mm -hmm. that first yep. O. So wish, outcome, and then this this third letter is where I think you're talking about most is obstacle. So this could be a physical obstacle. It could be an internal obstacle. And those are the true things you have to be like super serious with yourself. What are the things that get in my way that are going to prevent me from getting to this wish? That, this could, that could be a lot of stuff. That could be finances. Like, yes. like I don't have enough money to do the thing that exactly. gets me to the plate, like whatever. So all of those things you have to take into account. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to get over them? So, so I, that brings in the P, the plan. Okay, so so the the obstacle part, but like some like you know that it makes sense. But like I think some people won't. You don't hear very often is like when sometimes like I've had goals like so. This is something I learned when I did like my when I when I when it comes to we're in the art room when it comes to art and music. I have wishes, you know. I have the vision of the outcome. But, um, sometimes something I learned is like, you know, when you have a goal, when you're setting out to do it, you have to become a certain person in order to accomplish that goal, like, or to do it, to do a thing, you mm -hmm. know? So like for me to like play music, the person I am, when I do, when my music brain is fully engaged, it's uh, like, I'm fueled off of like depression and, and emotion and I drink a lot and I don't give a shit about what I eat too much. I, you know, I like to be, I like to eat good food, right? You know, it's like savory fucking meals instead of instead of my normal healthy food. I'll eat, you know, like, you know, shrimp tacadillos, which are fucking amazing. And I don't, I don't care too much about fitness, you know, because that's not my goal. My goal, my goal isn't living healthy. Like I don't have balance. I will admit that. Like I don't have, I don't, I don't do balance. You're an extreme person. Yeah. Yep. And so, but so it's like I would love to be a fucking musician. I would, but. 
But is that a but, realistic but, goal for you? Like, yeah, fuck yeah, I could do that shit. But so, but the thing is, is like, so are you willing to do all of the things in order right. to become so no. that? That's that, like, that's the difference. At, right now, actually, I just I'm not. you know, like right I, now, I, yes. I enjoy it. I like the, it's a fucking weird thing. It's like I enjoy it. I personally fucking enjoy it, kind of. But it's that it's those that lie to myself thing. Mm-hmm. I really don't like who I have to be That's in order to do that. You like that, and outcome. so it's a weird thing. So yeah. and 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 you know what? And but like the 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 trick to it is is like that's okay, that's okay. So like you know when, we, when like you know people come in, you know they 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 talk about fitness. They're like, I want a fucking six pack. I was like, do you know the kind of fucking person you have to be in order to get a six pack? Like, is that, is that in line with your values? Like Stacy would Stacy, Stacy's got good fucking balance. You know, like in my opinion, she's got good balance. Like she, um, when she, she looks good, she feels good, but she enjoys herself. She, she'll, she'll have a glass of wine every night and not give a shit. And like last night she took a tub and ate a couple uh, brownie bites, but this, your brownie bites from the store, the those, those are fucking bullshit. Those are called two bite brownies. Bullshit. It's no such thing. Who the fuck? Do you it's not like just like, like three, but you, okay. Ugh. I take ugh. small bites and those are poppers. Yeah. Every yeah. Bite. Yeah. But no, but, but like you, you're content being relatively healthy and fit. You're not because like, I want a fucking six pack because you don't want to live the life you have to live to have a fucking six pack. That's not your, it's not what you value. Yeah, but I also don't value having a six pack as something that I want to have all the time. So like, also, I think the difference between goals and values, which I've also read somewhere, is like that true dedication. Like values are just something that are nice to have. And then goals are something you will dedicate yourself to like that you want to happen, you want to have. But values are like, I like respectable people, like cool you know, I don't know. No. Anyway, that's just not something that I want yeah. to have. And I know that about myself, but I, I just don't have like a goal like yeah. that. Yeah. So it's like everybody would love to have a fucking six pack, but it's not in line with everybody's fucking values. Like, you know, like it, some people not- want to enjoy their life a little bit more yeah. in different ways than the fucking the 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 road to the six pack. You know, six so pack it's like, road is but hard. you can still like look it good, feel hard. good. Without a six pack, with with not too, it's it's not that hard being healthy and fit, you know. But so but if you I, wanted to try it sometime, like a, a good goal could be like, hey, I'm not going to drink for six months, and I'm going to yeah. eat as clean as possible, not boring, mm-hmm. but I'm going to eat pretty clean, and I'm going to hit the gym. I'm just like, what can I accomplish? I don't know. What can I accomplish? I'm fucking four months, you know. It's 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 cool what you can do, and it's like. I'm, I'm not one to tell people not to drink, but I don't drink much in these preps. It's like when my fitness is first, but just like fun little fucking experiments, you know? Right. Yeah. Cause another, can I do this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So another thing that I want to bring up because you were talking about your powerlifting is I remember specifically, I'm pretty sure it was Brandon who is Derek's powerlifting coach who told him at one point, I think I heard him say, envision yourself you know, on the podium or whatever they call it in powerlifting. So like you have to do these visualization exercises. And for a long time, I didn't believe in them at all. Like I just like, it's weird to me. I'm just going to say it. It's weird. So, um, to picture yourself at the, well, yeah. And it's just like, what does that do for you? It's just weird to me. I don't understand how you can just like go into, I don't know. I guess I don't know how to do it. And so is that something that you do honestly? And yeah. So like when you were telling me about the podcast from the happiness lab, you were telling me it was, it was the Michael Phelps coach session kind of where he was talking about visualization. But do you do it? Yeah. And so it's, it's, does it work for you? Because I don't, I've actually, I don't think I've ever done it before. I think it's what, I think it's, it's one of the big differences between me and my peers, like my competition. Like I think, you know, so every, everybody goes to the gym. Not everybody eats as good as they do. Not everybody supplements as, or not everybody eats as good as they should. Not everybody supplements as well as they should. Not many, not and the hardest part is the visual, the mental part, the visualization part. So it's funny because I remember that's when, why I don't do it. Cause it's the hardest part when I, and I don't know, you how. know, but like you, uh, you, um, so what, what I do is like, I, so like even, even in the tough mutter when I'm sitting, like when I was training for the tough mutter, I would 
you know, when I was sitting there doing like the cardio machines, I was doing like ellipticals and stuff because I couldn't mm -hmm. run. I would, if I was like feeling a little down or just complacent or something like that, I would imagine how it would feel to cross the finish line. You get a rush of emotion and things like that. And so it, and it's like, man, I want that feeling. But more so in competition, like when I did Rush Club in 2017, I did like for like the month leading up to Rush Club every night, before bed, I would like, oh, I would I just sit there too. like, and yeah. you know, was, and I would tell you sometimes I was I like, and it changes like my body chemistry. Like I am warm. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden I'll sit there and I'm just like flexed, dude. I'm laying down and I'm flexed and I'll catch myself. I'm like, oh, all right, calm down. But I, but I would consider that part of my training. I wouldn't, right. I wouldn't let me, I wouldn't let, I wouldn't let it keep me awake all night, but the visualization part is part of my training. So I'm doing rush club. That's my big, my big goal for this year. Don't tell us. Yeah, right. I'll, <laughs> I, I'll be okay. You know, I, you know, I will. Sh like, it's not a. You know, uh, my big my my big goal for this year is like rush. I'm doing Rush Club again. It's a one on one CrossFit competition. It's the same workout I like versus the same opponent. You know, so um, it's like you, a duel but, but CrossFit. It's just one on one. Yeah, and do all you get eyes assigned, are on you. You get assigned. A, how does it work? Yes. How do you get an opponent? Well, so it's like, it's, so there's, there's, it's, it's like the fight club of CrossFit and okay. actually like there was some feud between Rush Club and CrossFit, but I'm not involved in it. So I'm going to use both fucking names and they can all suck my ass, <laughs> you know, Cross like, training. I'm, yeah, yeah. It's functional fitness and, or whatever Eat. the fuck. Okay. Everybody Fortune knows, you know, so. Um, anyways, it's like the fight club of it. There's like men's weight classes and women's weight classes. And then for somebody like me, it allows me to have, a, a even, um, competition floor. So I'll go against other above knee amputees. Right. So, so like currently I'm the above knee champion of rush club. Uh -huh. woot, woot. And, uh, you know, a belt for it. Yeah. I saw it. Yeah. So that's my, right? that's, that's my big goal. So, uh, getting to it is like, I'm going to train and I'm going to, you know, and like, I'm not in a hurry. You know, I'm gonna eat good. I'm gonna stay in shape. I'm gonna supplement. But by the time Rush Club comes, I'll probably have done it in my head a thousand motherfucking times. You know, so that's the, so when I have a goal, I do obsess about it, and I and I and I. But I think that's important. Why are you beeping, Owen? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. It's your camera. Owen's Owen's GoPro. But, but oh. my question is like truly, honestly, because I heard this in the podcast. That was my favorite. I, I heard how some other people visualize, but how do you, like, do you set aside time for this? Is it a weekly thing, a daily thing, or is it, I guess, more the closer you get to your competition? Do you visualize more? And then also, what do you visualize? So, uh, so, you know, what's like in this power, like, so my life is different now than it used to be. So like my last real training cycle was that rush club, November, 2017. Cause after, you know, 2018 we were, or did I compete in 20? No. So I, I, it I did was, a powerlifting meet, but it that was, was your last of, competition was the powerlifting meet. Yeah. Right? September, yeah. 2018. But so last year we, you know, like we have the kids now, yep. like we have the boys, you know, um, we, so like the, like having, tw like that's super busy. We have our lives. Um, we have a lot of business things going on. Well, I have a fuck ton of shit going on in my life. Whereas like really all I, you know, for me personally, all I like to do is that I like to pick a goal. I like to work towards it. I like to think about it all the time. And I think that's one of the things that's stressing me out so much lately is I can't fucking focus. I have no visualization of my mm -hmm. lifts. There is no mind uh, body connection. Yeah. There's no, and I can't clear my fucking so you, that's brain. That's why you've been, you think having bad, bad days is because you're not it's definitely, able to it's definitely part of it. It's I part you know, of it. You got some leg stuff going on. Yeah. There's a lot is. of things, but it's, but it's, but it's, 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 it's not allowing me to get that fucking release from fitness. Cause my head's not there. I don't have the focus. I'm not used to it. I'm used to having the visualization, but it's like, but when you do have the visualization, that's what I'm asking. When do you do it? Or is it progressive? Like you do it more, the closer you get to your competition. And then also at like, how do you visualize? What points do you visualize? Is it hitting, hitting a specific weight per se? Like if you're talking about powerlifting or is it 
walking up to the squat rack. Do you know what I mean? Like how it's just the whole damn thing. Like I would uh, like, so like we'll take, we'll just keep using this, the rush club event. It was like, okay. I would, I, you know, I picked my walkout song. How would I feel during my walkout song? What, how would I, I how would I act? How would I act during my walkout? Am I going to go crazy or am I just going to walk out and be chill? What, what is my composure? How do I, how do I look? How do I want to look, you know? And then when it, when it says go, you know, I would just watch myself moving through all the movements, like fucking rep for rep, one at a time. And then calm I do and, this. Calm and, and composed, I do this. never stressed. Yeah. Calm and composed, never stressed. But it's like, but it was like, okay, so on the toe bar, do I go nine? I'm broken right into muscle ups. And I would play it in my head realistically and things like that. I swear to fuck. And so I would, I would typically do this at night or in the bath, you know, like and then it's like before you bed. You can feel the grip. You can feel... Yeah. You know, like you can smell the chalk, like all of that. But like, the trick is not to, not to the point where it um, fucks with your life. Like it can't, you know, like when it's time to shut it off, it's time to shut it off. Yeah. Like, Cause sleep is important, you right. know? And so I don't, oh, like oh. I said, like I said, I don't let, I, it's not a stress thing. It's like part of, it's training. part of training. It's it's not a stressful. So it's like, I'm never like watching myself lose or something like that, you know, <laughs> you know, but, I, but so this brings up a yeah, perfect yeah. point. So in this podcast that I love called The Happiness Lab, they talk to Michael Phelps's swim coach. Mm -hmm. And Michael Phelps has like 20 something gold medals from the Olympics. So his swim coach talks about how he would always tell Michael Phelps, visualize. He would specifically say, put the tape in. Um, and that's when Michael would know, okay, I need to visualize. But when he did the Beijing Olympics, Michael Phelps got uh, water in his goggles during one of his events and he couldn't see at all. So he knew, okay, I've been through this situation before because I've played this out in my head. Worst case scenario, if this happens, I know what to do because I've already played this situation out. So also you just said that too. So are you visualizing if something goes wrong, I know what to do, or if I miss this lift, or like you said, I want to go nine unbroken. So have you done like oh like a shit. contingency plan? So, I, like, so yeah. like, like I don't what's you know what I think you know. So for me, like my visualization things, like that's me accomplishing. That's me doing well. I sit there and think about me winning, doing well. The other fucking twenty three hours a day is when I fucking it's cut like like it's just you like it's you know, we, we train because we're not good enough. It's, I'm not an arrogant person. I, you know, I, I'm, I train because I think I'm not good enough. I'm afraid of losing. I don't want to, I want to win. So I work harder. And it's like, I think, I think the training, like Michael, he, like he was able to swim blind yes. because he actually physically swam it a fucking million times, right. you know? Yep. But so it's he like, also says that he was prepared for it because mm -hmm. he prepared his mind for it. And you just said it too. It's a contingency plan. Mm -hmm. So you guys have all of that training too. like fall mm -hmm. back to your army training. You didn't just plan missions and say like, this is what's going to go great guys. You always, I assume had, okay, if shit hits the fan, what are we going to do? When this rally doesn't up, work. A, a big yeah, thing, a big thing up, with that is just this, a mentality of, I don't care what happens. Yep. I'm going to fucking do my best. Okay. I, I, like I'll never so quit type one. thing. Yeah. yeah. But then you should have backup plans too. So like if this doesn't work or if this happens, of course you can't run through like every single scenario, but major events, if something happens, this is what we're going to do in place of, Plan B, like it's gonna, okay, where's plan B? This is exactly see, what I like to do when I'm trying to fall asleep and I'm super tired. See, I'll just oh, start dear. running through a million different see, contingencies. That's a, that's a level of thinking I don't <laughs> think I wanna get into because it would like stress and me out. And that's why I'm asking you yeah, is because no. people do it different ways. And so Michael says he was able to win that race still swimming blindly because he had played the negative scenarios in his mind too. And that's a lot of what that entire episode is about is oh, that's right. positive saying, thinking. All these people are like positive vibes oh, only, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Okay. So like some people say, if you imagine positive things, rid yourself of all the negative, all of these positive things will come to you. Just ask that's the universe, dude. Oh, fuck yeah. That is not yeah. true. Yeah. Positive things for you generally take a lot of time, a lot of effort, 
and you're going to see a lot of failure along the way and people can't handle that. And if we continue this positive vibes only thing, it's a lot of people are going to fail. It's yeah. just the matter of fact. And so that's what the episode is, is about like, you have to plan to fail. And for, for me, like the big point of it, and I think we can bring it into the goals thing. It's like, so you have a goal, but what do we like? We have negative thoughts. A lot of times there's, yes. there's You're talking about thoughts. self-talk, like, like yeah. negative mm -hmm. self-talk well, yeah. or just, or just, you know, it's like, Oh, you know, so it's like, so I'll, I'll go back to last year, last year. So like March 5th, last year, I was 210 pounds and I needed to start losing weight. And for a week I was eating good and working out good. And, and I was I, you know, after a week I looked in the mirror, I'm like, what the fuck? Why am I still fat? Why do I suck? Why am I not good enough? Things like that. It's like, it's sort of controlling that voice. Like it's okay to have that negative voice. That's, I think the big point of the show for me, for yeah. that, that podcast for me was a, like, when you have a goal, you're going to face that negative self-talk, but it's a fucking good thing yes. because it's the thing that's telling you to be better. It's the thing Push. that's reminding you that you want to be better. Like, yeah, it's kind of a fucking asshole about it. Yeah. Like your inner voice is a, like, th you'll never meet somebody meaner in your life than you. Right. You know, <laughs> like you to yourself <laughs> is meaner than you've fucking ever been treated before. Like, yeah. so, but like, that's okay. Like, don't let that. So like when you have a goal and you, and you face that negative, that, that negative inner monologue, don't, you know, don't, don't give into it. Like it is, it's, it's telling you that you want this yeah. thing. It's telling it's you to be better to and, you. and don't try to fucking silence it. It's helping you. Yeah. It's helping you don't. And it's not, it doesn't have to be an unhealthy thing. So it's like for me, right. You know, like me right now, it's like my, my, it's like, not I'm, your lift. yeah, I'm not hit. Is there, or when I started this powerlifting prep, January 27th, I was 10 weeks out. It's like, okay, I want to bench 356. My deadlifts are going fucking poor. And it's just, it's a, it's a couple things combined. So like, that's just a wash. It is what it is right now, but my squats and bench press are going really well. But like my squats, I, I didn't, um, I, I hadn't squatted for like eight or nine months or something like that. So coming in, I was like, I want to hit that 303 that I missed. You hadn't, you hadn't squatted for eight or nine months because your leg wasn't fitting and right. you had to use the box in order yeah. to, to, yeah, to just go get down. the work. Yeah. So I didn't, so it was like, you know, I was a fr like my, my negative, you know, I'm a pretty, I've pretty good self-talk now, but like that negative inner voice, it's like, Oh shit. Like this, this weight is scary. This is, there's, there's negative, you know, I say that loosely, like it is, it is a negative voice saying like the things that says I can't do it. You know, like on Friday when I squatted that 290 for two, I was fucking terrified. Yeah. I was fucking terrified, but I didn't let that voice win. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's okay. That's the fucking voice that's telling you to, that you need to be better. You know, yeah. if you, if I just had, if like fucking happy people to me are stupid and like, that's just <laughs> like, I like happy people must just be complacent. Isn't that kind of like, or having like just a vision board. I've seen yeah. people have vision boards and that's great. It ain't going to help you accomplish but shit. But you have to do things to, you know, make an effort yeah. for I think, those vision I think boards. though those vision boards are a, a tool for what you're talking about for the, yes. for the, the Michael Phelps thing, the, the working yourself through the problem, the mental imaging and stuff like that. Yes. I think if you just pin pictures on a board, nothing's going to happen. That's but if you're I'm using saying. that to implement like your visualization and, and Correct. stuff like that. Correct. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Just having a vision board and just thinking positively, That's which some help. people, you know, are actually saying is true, it's not going to help. And, you know, money doesn't fall out of the sky. Championships don't fall out of the sky. They just don't. Sorry. So it's going to take work. It's going to take time and you're going to have obstacles along the way. Yeah. So I get, yeah, that's a, so like when we're talking, you know, bringing back to goals like that writing, like your goal takes mother fucking work to accomplish. Yeah. Accept that. Get ready to do like, uh, like, but it seems almost so dumb to even have to say it, but that's where people fucking stop is when, you know, like with like, the, like writing down a goal is fucking easy. Imagining yourself accomplishing that goal is fucking easy. And it feel, both of those things feel really good. You know, what doesn't feel good. You know, what feels fucking awful doing the things that are required to accomplish that. Like it is always just fucking yeah. it like, no, in, and, and you can, and, and you can yeah. enjoy the process, but like, like I am, I'm enjoying my prep, but it's, 
I feel awful. It's grueling. Every morning I wake up, I feel like I've been hit by a fucking truck. My stump is fucking purple and <laughs> chafed. Everything is awful. But I you would know not what? have picked that. Goal. This is what I fucking <laughs> do, man. Like right? this is I'm working towards my goal, and and like my stump and my my prosthesis, things are going very wrong right now, and it makes it's dude like so like this morning like we're recording on a Monday again. Okay, this morning was my deadlift day, and for the second that like last week was the worst ever this week this week it was like okay we just suck at deadlifts right now yeah so it's like it's it's defeating in the moment and like dude my pain in my left leg this morning oh my god i'm not a bitch man no i don't think I'm you not are a fucking bitch you know so your left leg is your human leg yeah so my my human leg like like because like i'm i think I'm like losing balance. My, my, my human leg is trying to balance and use that much power at the same time where it just, it just fucking hurts. So anyways, it's like today I was just like, I was just, it, I'm overwhelmed with feelings of just wanting to quit. Like, you know, it's like, oh, it's good enough. You know, I'm not at my goal yet. April right. 4th is the goal. The meat is the goal. What can I do April 4th? I've done very good. I've accomplished. I've, I've, rebuilt my strength so I can get fucking complacent and say, Oh, that's good enough. But you do that too many times and that becomes your fucking habit. Right. You fucking. So I think like we'll end on this point, commitment, commit, 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 commit. Even if it's something you are learning, you don't want to fucking do see it through, see it through. Because if you start fucking quitting, we, and we know this, you know, yes. we know this. If you yeah. like, if quitting becomes your habit, that you're just going to quit everything all the time. And I fucking learned this. So this, I stopped quitting 12 years ago when I, you know, so when I was in the army, like I, I, I did quit a couple, like, so I went to the pre ranger course at oh, yeah. Fort Bragg. I wanted yep. to go to ranger school, but I quit the pre ranger course two times and I'm not like, okay. Like I just wasn't mentally tough enough back then. Physically I was, I was, it was fine, but mentally I, I just like, I gave up for stupid reasons. I, I gave Mental, up for like yeah. dumbass fucking reasons. I wasn't like whiny bitchy. I just thought like, oh, this is stupid. It's not worth my time. That's the fucking test. Yep. You know, that's the fucking test. Play and so game. that's, and that's when yeah. I said, I'll just never quit anything fucking ever again, you know? And I, and, and I haven't. Sometimes it's okay, okay to quit for good reasons, but for the most of the part, it's like, I don't have, you know, I, you know, when these, these thoughts like this morning come into my head, it's like, just fucking quit, dude. It's like, Oh no, I don't quit by definition of my existence. I don't quit. Yeah. And so I'm going to see it through. I'm going to survive easier and easier and to quit. It is better quitting. Yeah. It's better to like, it's better to see it through, accomplish your goal and then say, okay, I don't want to live like that anymore. Like that's not, that was like, okay, yeah. I did that thing. That was and, not and, what and I, I expected. Learned. And like, <laughs> well, 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 like, like it was good. I learned some new things. I learned right? some stuff yeah. and it was good, but I don't think I want to commit, you know, that much of my life to yeah. that one Check thing, that box. but you fucking, you have to commit cause you, cause you know, you have to have, you have to build a fucking resume mm -hmm. of accomplishments. Otherwise you'll never fucking feel good about yourself. If you yeah. know you're a fucking quitter, if your brain knows you're a quitter, if your brain knows you're a loser, your brain knows you're a quitter yeah. and your brain knows and you're a loser. Do it again. So this was like, um, in the Jordan Peterson book, this was chapter one. It's like your, like the more, the more you fuck the chapter one is about stand, stand up with your shoulders back. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, like, promote confidence or something or like at least inside promote confidence. Cause like the more you just sit, you, the more you just fucking hunch over, the more you're going to hunch over. He's talking like about brain. lobsters in that chapter. Yeah. Wasn't so he? it's okay. the lobster thing. I yeah. Have to read this book. Yeah. So that's the thing. So the, but the, sh the, the short of it is the more you quit, the more you lose, the more your brain knows you're a quitter, mm -hmm. the more you're going to be a quitter, yeah. the more you're going to be a loser. Cause that's just your fucking state. Stop the cycle, yes. accomplish something. And then, so like, you know, like I've said in the past, like let, you know, people are like, how do you, how do you keep going? And so I was like, dude, you just use your fucking momentum to keep pushing you forward. Yes. So, so now it's like be consistent, getting a so, goal under your belt gives you a huge advantage yeah. over your negative voice inside yeah. your head. And so, so fucking small. start, start small. small, start, yeah. start <laughs> small, small man. start time. small yep. and then fucking just build a resume because then, so now I'm faced with that voice again. Like we, 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 I try to bring this point home. It's like, there's, there's not much different between me and the person listening who wants my help. Right. It's just, maybe I'm further along the road, you know? That's it. And, um, 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 uh, so like right now I'm fucking like this morning, overwhelmed by that voice of quit. You've done good enough. Just fucking go home. But I know that's not what I do. 
That's not, I don't quit. And I know because, you know, there's been times in the past where I've heard this voice and accomplished my goal anyways. I know mm -hmm. I, I know I can do it. This I voice know, doesn't know what the fuck yeah, he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. It's gonna come there and be like, oh no, that's yeah. not what I do. And Shut I, the fuck and up. I, and yeah. I've proven that, you know, but if I was like, I'm a fuck, but you know, like, if, if I was like, I'm a fucking quitter, I quit. That's what I do. And that's what, yep. that's where people, that's where a lot of fucking people are stuck and it's not their fault. It isn't, it's yeah. not their fault. You just have you to know. train your brain by doing yeah. the things right. consistently, so habitually. I don't want to be too lenient. It is their fault, but it's also not their fault. Yeah. Like if they just made a couple fucking human, you know, human mistakes for too long and now it's their nature. Mm -hmm. Quitting is their nature. Self-deprecation is their nature. You know, you can fucking change that. It goes back to another thing where if you do or think things over and over so much, your brain, our brains are so dumb, supposedly in this case, that they actually think that they happened. So your brain doesn't know the yeah. difference. So if you're continuously thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to fail, I'm just gonna quit, then you so are just going to quit. Perfect place to end with like, I fucking like the, the we are not as smart as we think we are. Yes. We are not as in control as we think we are. We have to fucking, we see we, how many times have we said this on the show? We have to human proof our lives right? because humans are fucking dumb. <laughs> Goals are a way to fucking human proof your fucking life so that you don't suck and that you feel good about yourself. Four to six month goals, fucking pick a goal you know, and if you, and if you're just starting and if you've been a fucking loser for 10 years, pick a goal, start small, um, make a plan, uh, do the fucking work. Okay. Consistently. Yep. Do the fucking work, do everything you, you know, you need to do. You're never going to be perfect, but it is like, try your fucking best. Feel good about the effort you put in, you know, and then, um, it, 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 commit, see it through, see it through, accomplish that thing, accomplish that thing. And then right back to fucking step one, pick the next goal. Pick like, the next that's goal. like that's how you Rinse fucking, and repeat. That's, that's how you human proof your life, you yeah. know? And like, you know, I go through phases of doing things and that's, and, but that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing like four to six month goals. It's like, I, I, it might appear to be wishy-washy to some people like, oh, but it's like, sometimes you have to freshen things up. Like yeah. Eric was fucking diehard CrossFit and then he went into music and then he went into powerlifting and then and he, he was doing to CrossFit. Art. Yeah. And it's like, and then he went to art. Like I keep it fresh, man, yeah. because like I'm human proofing my fucking life. Cause guess what? Without fucking goals, all I fucking want to do is sit around thinking about how this world sucks and I want to die. <laughs> you know? Like, well, like that's my nature. So I have to fucking, I have to dare, I have to, brain. I have to Derek proof my life. Yep. And and that's, and that's how you do it. It's just hacking the system, man. It is. And so that's literally it. Hacking the system. Hacking the system because we're dumb fucking creatures that aren't. So like, yes, goals. I hope, uh, I, um, you know, I think we, I think we did a good job staying on task. Yeah. I think, I think we talk about goals for the whole goddamn time. We, did. we, we wow. met our goal. We met we our fucking, goal. So that, oh man, we made a goal. We fucking, we, <laughs> we committed. No tangents. We accomplished that. And now maybe moving forward, be like, hey, maybe we don't fucking suck ass at podcasts <laughs> like, like we think we do. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, I think that'll do it for this episode. I feel good about that one. I think we got some good, uh, Me too. wasn't as many like fucking dick jokes or anything like that, but that's what, that's what the show is going to be. Uh, well, Stacy doesn't appreciate dick jokes at all. And I think, I think, um, I love dick jokes. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. And, but, um, but this, but, this but, is uh, a serious topic. Yeah. This is like a, the bulk of the con, the bulk of the emails and direct mm -hmm. messages and stuff that, that we get are about like achieving goals, especially through yeah. fitness. So at, at some point, you know, like time, we, we said when we set out on this thing is like, we want to have a good time, but most importantly, we want to like help people. Yeah. Fucking. I think the next most asked question is when is Deanna Wida coming on mm, mm -hmm. podcast? I, I, next time? I wanna, next time? No, it can't be. I, I, Cause I want to just get fucking. So like after my powerlifting meet, <sighs> I'm going to, Hey, don't. Oh, that's yeah, right. After I'm going to start the, like, um, she did say the F word last night though. What'd she say the F word about? Well, like, let's not, let's not, let's anyway, not get into sorry. mom things. Okay. I want to like this podcast, like in what, three weeks, I'll be able to drink every fucking show. That's oh, my, right. that's my Absolutely. goal is okay. to be able to commit to the, to the person I need to be to do this podcast for like me to enjoy it more. Can't wait. I just want to do, and like today, I just want to fucking drink, man, but I'm in Celebrate. prep and I don't drink. I'm, I'm, I'm three weeks out from competition and I don't drink. So it's tough, but I got a goal I'll and I'm going to fucking, you. yeah, she will. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Um, I'm Derek. I'm Stacy. I'm Owen. We love you. We love you. Pick a goal, accomplish it. Uh, 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 and we'll catch you next week. Cheers guys. <laughs>